problem. They may have to improvise to carry out a rescue. But over the years, some of these improvisations have become standard procedure, and specialized pieces of equipment have been developed to deal with recurring problems. This simple-looking device, for example, is a real lifesaver. It's called an air lance, and this particular one, belonging to Suffolk Fire Brigade, became very important to nine-year-old Adam Watson from Lowestoft and his younger brother, Shane. In our reconstruction, Shane plays himself, but Adam is played by an actor. They're both typical boys, real handful. There is, like, competition between them that usually end up in a fight because Adam can't can't keep up with, um, with Shane. I'm more better at football than Adam. He's more better than me at hard shot and good aiming. Adam and Shane's baby brother Oliver had been ill, so their mother stayed at home and for once the boys walked to school on their own. I felt really guilty. I sent them off on the round. Be careful on the way, right? And if you see somebody, if you can see somebody to walk to school with. All right, go on then. Off again. Oh, really late now. We keep saying, oh, we're making late, we're going to get mega tailed off. Yeah. We've got about five minutes to get to school, so we better race. Yeah? Um, OK. Let's go! We keep running, running. I'm going to take a shortcut. Coming? No. When Adam said he's going to take a shortcut, he said, are oh, you going to follow him? I said, no. See you at school, then. All right. Adam thought he was running over solid ground, but in reality, just beneath the crusty surface, there were thousands of gallons of mud slurry. It's stopping. When he walked into it, he keeps seeking in as up to his knees. He said, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, but he went. <laughs> you really kidding? No, I'm going down. And he, he said, I'm really stuck because I'm not telling a joke. I felt awful. I'll get some help. Adam was entirely on his own and sinking into mud twice his height. He couldn't begin to lift himself out and was too shocked to shout for help. Luckily, he was spotted by some locals who flagged down a lorry driver. Can you come and help us, a little boy stuck in the What's mud the up there? Where? Little boy stuck in the mud. He's going to Adam. What He's about? stuck over there. There's a hole in the fence up here. There's a hole in the fence here. All right, lad. Stay still. I did try to reach the boy from oh, the, oh. the same approach as where he went into the mud. But being as I was heavier than him, I was going down quicker. Sink him himself. I went around the back of the boy oh, no. and um, I picked up some wood, odd pieces of wood and two or three car wheels and flung them into the mud. I was able to keep on top of the mud, whereas if I hadn't had those, I would have probably sunk in quicker than the boy. Oh, we'll get you out now. We'll get you out. But it was much harder than it looked. Hold oh, no. on. I tried to lift him out, but I couldn't shift him and the suction in the mud was too great to pull him out without hurting him. I can't move him. Someone get the fire brigade. We've just come on duty, taken over from the night shift. Um, we've been on duty for about two minutes when the call came in. Sean's stuck in mud. Yeah, just look across and get the airlines. Okay. I went across the ancillary bay where we keep all the non-mobile specialist equipment, grab the airlines. By this time, Adam had been stuck in the mud for more than half an hour and was getting pretty miserable. Hello, mate. What's your name? Adam. Adam. Well, be very, very still, Adam, and we'll see if we can come and get... John, I'm not going to get them out the easy way. A couple of salvage sheets. We decided to use salvage sheets. OK, Adam. We'll soon have you out, mate, OK? Which helped us spread our weight across the mud. Be careful, lads. It's really sticky down here. Me being the lightest was... Volunteered to crawl out to Adam just to make contact and reassure him. You OK, Adam? Very cold. Tried to get him to talk to me to try and find out what his level of consciousness was. He was very quiet. In my experience, the quiet ones are the ones you want to worry about because they're normally the people who are in more distress. Um, and he was shaking and cold. So there was obviously a problem. Hypothermia was possibly starting to set in. I'm going to get this line round you to keep you safe, OK? The firemen had been told that Adam had once had an epileptic fit, and that added to their problems. An epileptic fit in the state and Jeez. the position that Adam was in was uh, 
quite dangerous because if he collapsed into the mud, then he was going to be in real trouble. OK, I've got him on. If you can just keep a tight line on that. One, two, three. The mud had such a hold of me, if I'd have pulled too hard, we'd have possibly broken his back. No, no, he's not going to come. We're going to need the air lance. It works by attaching the lance, which is like a T-shaped piece of pipe, to an air cylinder. The air is forced through the pipe. At the bottom of the pipe, there are holes. It basically has an effect uh, of what I can only describe as, as liquefaction, um, where solid mass is almost turned to a liquid. Right, I'm just going to push this down by your feet. It's all done by touch. Air, just push the lance into where you think okay. his feet might be. OK, air on. Air on. OK, air off. Pass the lance back to you. Push you and have your eight, Adam. OK, we're going to try again then. OK. Again, after three, let me do the work for you. One, two, three. <laughs> no, he's not going to come. Tiff, can you come up and give us a hand? The yeah, mud the line, it was yeah. like I'll nothing I've ever come across in my life before. It was so thick uh, and glutinous that it just stuck to anything it, it, it touched. Let it go longer this time. The air lance doesn't just liquefy the immediate area. And unfortunately, for me and Tiff, we were actually sinking into the mud as well. You have to move it. I'm going in myself here. OK, I get the air off. Air off! Let's get the air he was off. stuck in so well, I had to actually get behind okay, him yeah. and give okay. him a bear hug. It was a nice sensation to actually release him because it felt like someone actually let go of his feet. Okay, let me get his legs. Okay. Yep, we've got him. Okay. Can we have a hand up here? I'd like to thank the fireman ever so much. I don't think people realise, um, you know, the sort of work they do. Adam was taken to hospital where he was checked for hypothermia, but he was allowed home the same day, none the worse for his sticky ordeal. I was thinking how lucky I was to get out. I came to the mud, I sang. That was a shot. I had to my legs and my knees and my waist. Like I was never going to get out. I could just sink up to my head. I felt the air blowing. It tickled me. We'd bought him a new pair of shoes on the Saturday. When the fireman lifted him up, he had one shoe on, and I was thinking of that new shoe stuck in that mat. Got it. thought my mum was going to be cross, but instead she was quite happy. I don't think I'll do it again. <laughs>